Hi guys. Today is genuinely the first day that I'm starting to feel like myself again. The last two days since getting home from Cape Town, I have just been purging my soul in the form of food poisoning. And in life, you have to just give reasons for bad occurrences to make them less bad and make them seem part of a grander plan. And so I feel like this food poisoning was forcing me to slow down and really honor the events of my life and commit to the morning process rather than doing what I tend to do, which is distracting it away with work and projects and and not sitting in these feelings. And I know that there's so much value in just being in the feelings. So I'm glad that I've taken the time to do that. Every morning so far, I've been waking up at about 6, 6.30 because of the time difference. I've just been sleeping early and a lot. And I'll wake up and I'll do a 30 minute Deepak Chopra meditation. And this meditation that I found is so amazing because firstly, you focus on your breathing so you kind of ground yourself, but then it asks you to get into your heart space and you think of all the things that you're grateful for in your life of which there are a lot even in times of hardship there are so many things to be grateful for and then it asks you to focus on your heartbeat and that takes so much concentration to literally just be with the pulsing of your heart like if you let it slip you won't feel your heartbeat anymore and there's something about focusing on my heartbeat that then makes all emotions pass through more easily and my body feels available for them, my heart feels more open and I just feel softer the whole day. So that's been a very useful healing practice recently. And guys, I feel so like overjoyed with myself today. God, I feel like emotional already. Why am I emotional? Um, so basically I woke up today and before I'd even opened my eyes, I had this such strong, clear idea for a novel, a fiction novel, and this is something I used to do as a child all the time. I would just write and write and write and write, I would write stories, I would write books, I would tap away at this ancient laptop that was my dad's old laptop, and I would just write, 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 and over the years I've just lost it. Like I used to write fan fiction as a teenager, I used to love it. But then as exams took over, as YouTube took over, as Minerva took over, I have I've just lost that part of myself that wants to write. Like I know it's in here somewhere, but it, it, yeah, it's felt so intangible, so like hard. Like I'm trying to grasp at it, like come here, come give me inspiration and mm -mm, no way. But wow, I feel such a clear, strong motivation today to write, 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 write. And the first thing I had to do before I even meditated was grab a notebook and just dump all the ideas that I have for this novel. And I've written like six pages of just like ideas for it. And, you know, whether I write this thing or not, the fact that I have this feeling back, this is life changing. This is life changing, guys. You have to listen to your intuition. You have to make hard choices in your life because if there's something that you are not listening to yourself on, whether it is a job that you hate, that you despise, that you loathe, a, a relationship you're in that does not serve you, even though you are convincing yourself that it does serve you, or a friend that you're around that makes you feel small, living with family who make you feel worse like i don't know what it is there can be so many reasons why we feel stuck that are beyond ourselves and are actually part of our environment if you can work out what that is have the strength to do something about it and the opportunity to do something about it because i appreciate life is complex and it's not always easy to just magic these things away if you can get rid of that stuckness wow it is like this this well of intuition, this well of your voice returns and I just feel like so many answers to my uncertainty are going to come now because I'm listening to myself. Yeah. Okay, also I feel so healed from my food poisoning today. <laughs> I am going to 
meditate and do yoga and then maybe walk my dog. Today is a slow day for me. Today is a no work day for me. Today I honour myself and my morning process. Welcome to the moving vlog. So I moved to London tomorrow and today I spent the entire morning crying. <laughs> if you missed my kind of life update in my Cape Town video, I recently made a very big decision which has affected my life a lot and it just feels like the roots of my life have been deeply shaken. Like so much has crumbled in my world recently and yeah i'm i'm processing it i'm really processing the loss of this and mourning the versions of myself who die with this decision and it's just heavy and change is just scary and healing is such a fluctuating process and i'll be fine one day and then collapse in tears the next so I'm trying to be soft with myself, but damn, this is a new chapter for me in so many ways. And I don't know, I, I have this feeling that like, I'm really committing to a city now. Like I'm committing to London, I'm committing to building a life. And for the last four and a half, five years, I, I haven't really been committing. Like I moved every single semester of university. So I was never anywhere for longer than four months. And yeah, I feel really ready for roots. I feel so ready to have the same routine for a while and to experience all the growth that comes with being in the same place and not being able to run from your issues and sitting in them and dealing with sameness every day. Like I'm so excited for sameness. I don't know if anyone relates to this, but I am so scared of interior design. <laughs> Like, I grew up in a house where none of us liked it. I was never allowed to, like, paint my walls or change anything. And because I've been moving around so much, I, I haven't really, like, committed to making anywhere feel like mine. I've just allowed these places to be liminal spaces for the transience of that chapter. And this is the first time that I'm scared because this space is definitely mine for six months and could be mine for longer if I want it to be. And I have just let go of someone in my life who is really good at interior design and who was gonna help me with this whole move. And so they were meant to be here and the ghost of them is haunting me in this moving process because now I have to do it all alone and I am so scared to be an independent queen. I'm so scared of my inadequacies. I'm so scared, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. What if I don't get on with my housemate? I've met her once. I'm sure she's amazing, but I'm scared. The room looks quite small and the bed looks like it just takes up 90% of the space and just juts out. I'm scared that I'm not going to make it feel like a home. I am just scared. Oh, another death that I'm dealing with is feeling like I am done with home. I really, I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to be here. I've been here for most of this year since graduating. I don't want to be here anymore. So I'm also kind of mourning the like Jade who is okay with being here because it's not me anymore. I'm an adult and I want to be an adult. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've just put my nice sheets in the wash so that I can take them for tomorrow. I'm going to take all my plants. I think I'm going to take one of these lamps because I will only have space for one like bedside table. And then I'm going to fill this suitcase and then my dad is going to drive me so I do have some flexibility to bring more things. So hard to choose which books to take. I think right now I don't have a bookshelf in there but these are the books that I haven't read yet. Or this book, Untamed, is just so relevant to my situation right now so I'm like I want it for strength. <laughs> I am an untamed woman right now. And I'm just packing up my jewellery 
in here and I normally present my jewelry on this cute little yoga girl <laughs> it's me I'm her oh my god wait also I need to show you this powerful necklace that I got in South Africa I have never worn jewelry this big but you know when you see something and you just feel so connected to it you feel like it's mine already I felt that when I saw this look at it like is that not the most powerful splendid thing you've ever seen I love it I feel like if I was walking around it feels like my heart is shining out I love it so much. Okay, how cute is this? Last year for my birthday, someone I love made me like a vinyl version of the episode that I did on the Meditative Story podcast because they loved it so much. And I just framed it. So it's like this beautiful vinyl. It doesn't fully really fit, but it's okay. And I'm thinking of maybe putting it in my room in London, but I'm not sure yet. But it is serving as manifestation power for my podcast. Guys, I'm so excited. I feel like since making this hard choice, my voice is coming back. Like my authentic desire to talk and share and interview people and connect deeply with people is just coming back in full force. And I can't wait to have a new medium to hold it all, to hold this power, this energy. Daffodil season has my heart. Also guys, if any of you have ever wondered what my bedroom smells like, it is this. Like, this is my favourite scent ever. This is the Lush Twilight Spray for Corporal Sleep and it's like a lavender, like, I don't know, goodness. Like, this is my idea of heaven. I love it so much. It's so soft and every day before I go to sleep, I spray this and like the scent of it makes me relax. Also, I love Lush, just their whole ethics and vibes. I love them. Do you know what's really good about when you really listen to your intuition and have to make hard choices and they affect loads of other people and rationally it's a flawed choice, but intuitively you know it's the right choice. Do you know what is so amazing about having finally made that choice is that the courage translates to other areas of life too. Like I feel the least like a people pleaser that I've ever felt in my life. I'm in a place to honour myself and what I need and what I want and if I hurt people in the process, if their feelings are hurt, you know like not in scary big ways but in just inconvenienced ways, I'm so much more okay doing that because I understand that I can't let parts of myself die in the constant performance of appeasing to others and making them feel more comfortable. And I really just feel like, hi world, like I have done the hard thing, I've listened to my authentic voice, like give me all the things that are meant to be mine, because this thing was not meant to be mine and that is okay and I've realised that and I've released it, so I am making space for all the goodness in the new everything that is meant to serve my highest self, my most authentic self, like give it to me because I'm actually ready for it this time, you know, like I, I've made the space, I can hold it, I know what it feels like for something to intuitively be wrong and so I'll now know what it feels like for something to be intuitively right. Oh, so much growth. I'm so proud of the woman that I am becoming. Sometimes I'm tempted to see how I've spent my year post-graduation as like a waste because I haven't jumped straight into some big crazy career like past me would have envisioned. But genuinely, the personal growth that has happened in this year so far with like myself in understanding my traumas and my past and my family and how they relate to me and just undoing the effects of some relationships in my life that just didn't serve me. Like this has been such a mental health year, such like an inner growth, spiritual growth year. And yeah, like we're just, we have seasons of life, right? And I think when we truly embrace these softer seasons, we create the fertilizer for future seeds to properly grow. Like we're doing the work, we're clearing out the weeds and the rubbish. And my fertilizer has been going strong. So whenever the right things come, 
I'm so ready for them. <laughs> I'm so ready for them. Oh my gosh, look at these nipple tassels I made at Lucy and Yak event. That is, that's iconic. I am manifesting the kind of confidence to wear these. <laughs> It's one thing to make them, it's another to wear them. Pretty much there. I went and procrastinated for a few hours, but it's okay, we're nearly done. I just ordered a desk for my place and an ergonomic chair, and I just, oh my God, I'm so excited about the setup. Okay, I'm also really coming into a spiritual era. I think I've suppressed the side of myself that is spiritual or very sensitive and emotional for a long time because I don't know I'm such a skeptical person and I've studied sciences most of my life and I love evidence for things but I have such a guilty pleasure in everything that is in the realm of tarot cards and astrology and I just find it fun I love it and so I really want to lean into it in this chapter and I really want some crystals. I feel so drawn to having crystals and I just researched some crystal shops in London and this is the most London thing ever but this crystal shop I found you can't go there without booking an appointment because I think they want to talk to you about like you know what you want the crystals for and like giving recommendations and I think that's so cute. So I have a crystal shopping appointment on Friday and it's my birthday next week. So I'm gonna treat myself to some crystals. I love it, crystal era, here we come. <laughs> wow, I've really filled this suitcase as much as this suitcase could possibly be filled. This is most of my clothes right here. Okie dokie. Is this thing gonna close is the question. On to the mini suitcase. I can't wait to read Anne of Green Gables. I've heard so many good things. Ruby always recommends it, so it's time. And The Little Prince. I think they're gonna be my first reads. And I keep dipping in and out of braiding sweet grass, so I'm excited to read the rest of it. It's one of those books where I read like a chapter every month, and I always love the chapter, and it's so thought provoking. Oh yes, I'm very excited to keep reading it. Look how pretty this vegan chocolate bar is. That is going to be a treat for myself in the new apartment. I have this Royboice tea that I got in Cape Town. I'm very excited to have that. I love tea. I'm ready to have like a whole tea shelf. Miss you already, Jade. Oh. 